Welcome to Merkaba Chakras, where we talk Buddhism in the fifth dimension. Welcome to another podcast episode of Merkaba Chakras. Today, we talk to author Nikki Sutton. Now, Nikki has been discussing how consciousness factors into an awakening and ascension that people can have on her popular YouTube channel. She has an intuitive approach to working with spirit guides to get this information out to the public. In her newest book, Consciousness Rising, Guiding You Through Spiritual Awakening and Beyond, comes out this March 2021. So we're actually going to get a little teaser into the mystic journey of coming into awakening and consciousness through Nikki Sutton. So with that, Nikki, welcome to Merkava Chakras. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. And what a wonderful podcast you have. It's wonderful. Oh, thank you. We talked a little earlier about the podcast and, you know, the in this realm of spirituality, um, you're going to get a lot of different things from different people, people who are in different phases of their awakenings, different phases of their ascension process. Um, so everybody's kind of going through the journey a different way. And there's quite a bit of skeptics as well who haven't quite um, had similar or the same experiences. And so the wonderful thing I really like about your material and about the material that's coming in the book that you're going to be publishing very soon um, is that you have a mystic journey. And in Buddhism, what, what we term as the mystic is someone who maybe not have had formalized um, training from um, like a yogi or an institution or some kind of monastic school of, of thought. Um, like for myself, I grew up in Buddhism. I'm trained metaphysics and consciousness and energy healing through the different schools of Buddhism. And so I'm, that's, that's my background. But for other people, they maybe came into their awakening and ascension process um, through having their firsthand experience on their own. And, you know, there's many ways to get there as well. And we, what we would term that as the mystic journey. And so um, th that would be you. So before we dig into your wonderful work, can you tell us your story for how you got into this in the first place? Yeah, well, I guess it would be kind of a mystic's journey because I didn't have any formal training. Um, well, I practiced Christianity at school, but for me, it was intuitive realizations. And throughout my life, I always had the sense that something was a bit um, different about this reality than what had been told to me and uh, I always felt like maybe there was spirit around and that life goes on after we pass on <clears throat> and yeah I'd always had these suspicions you know <laughs> there was more to reality than what meets the eye um, but it, it took a spiritual awakening to really shift my perceptions <clears throat> And that came in the form of a of a traumatic event that was quite significant in my life it was a, a I parted company with the father of my children and, and moved uh, to a new location and didn't know anyone and had set up home on my own. And, um, and that was, you know, it, it was a bit hard work because the house was in a bit of a state and I was, you know, quite traumatized indeed. Um, and sometimes a traumatic event can initiate awakening because it, it makes you reflect and, and seek healing and want to feel better. And, and I thought about what used to make me feel better in the past, um, even reading and, and learning a little bit about mediumship in younger years did. So I just, I opened up YouTube and started surfing and, and then the information came along. So <clears throat> from then on, it was the information that was causing my awakening. Uh, lots of realizations and stuff I'd never even really conceived of and yet much of it was a confirmation of things I kind of subconsciously suspected so uh, yeah that that's kind of my story of how I got into this so so, so Nikki let me ask you this um, just to get a little bit more detail <coughs> on the, your awakening process because everyone has a different story for how they got their awakening um, 
and their experience and symptoms for their awakening. It's a process. So what, what initially, like, did you see anything unusual, any nuances in your reality that was there something peculiar that kind of started the awake, the series of awakenings for you? I mean, well, I mean, it was at that point, a traumatic event, but before that, there were things that made me really, yeah, but start to believe that there was more to life. For example, and I write this in my book. So there was um, an instance where I was sitting in my bedroom. I was about 18 years old, right? So I'm sitting on a chair next to my boyfriend at the time, who's on another chair, and we're watching a movie. And when the movie finished, we both happened to glance over towards the bed and there was a cat sitting on it except we didn't own a cat at that time and it was partially see-through this cat and um and at that point it jumped off the bed and ran under our chairs and, and was gone now the amazing thing is is that we both saw this apparition at the same time and he turned to me and said did you see that and I was like yep it was a, a black and white cat with its tail pointing in the air and it ran under the chair yep and he went white as a sheet because he had never entertained anything like this before and for me that was great confirmation I know it wasn't a, an apparition of a human being but it was a cat but still nevertheless it illustrates that there's more going on and perhaps the continuance of life whether it was an echo of the cat in another dimension or whether it was its spirit so I should think is was its spirit because it, it resembled a cat we used to own that passed oh. away about five years previously you see so was it the same cat or was it Possibly. your old cat it had the same mm-hmm. markings you see but it, it was more of a markings oh. yeah it was more of a gray and white probably because it was quite Mm see-through you could slightly see through it you see and I did see the cat again um just outside my bedroom door running along the corridor um uh maybe a year later and it sort of appeared as this as if it was appearing out of an invisible bag it sort of appeared head first and then disappeared as if into an invisible bag um so do you see anybody holding the invisible bag or Oh, no, no. Well, I don't mean a literal bag. I mean, like, it it appeared out of invisibility, sort of head first, tail last, and then disappeared head first, tail last. And and there it was again. That was clear as day, and the sunlight was shining on it, but there was nothing nothing outside to, to make this so clear there was no there was nothing outside that could have created that Uh, and it was clear as day anyway so um and later on I had a another boyfriend not that I've gone through that many but never mind (laughs) Uh, it's okay to date it's okay to date okay (laughs) and he he was uh, very intuitive and he kept seeing the cat and I, not when oh. I was seeing it and he would say have you have you got a cat and I was like no no he said, I keep seeing this cat around everywhere it's black and white cat and I was like oh right oh. yeah but I think I know what you mean so he was he was very his psychic senses were very um switched on I think that particular one so yeah so that was I have heard that I have heard many people who have past loved ones or past not necessarily loved ones of past pets that they loved and they would see or feel apparitions of their pet or they would um I had a client who would sit in bed after her big saint bernard had passed away and she would literally she said that she would literally feel his presence like like he used to when he was alive sit next to her and the the indent of the bed would form as if he was sitting next to her and she would feel him so it was really for it was really kind of funny um that she's like oh you're still here and and that was nice and then eventually um the the experiences simmered Mm -hmm. but so so you had some inklings to the thinning of the veil um and and then you had your divorce and that yeah we we weren't married we just parted company so that's accelerated it um yeah so it was it was later on um some yeah eight eight years later maybe um it was it was really the traumatic nature of of the life change which caused me to really start to search and seek for information and And what information uh, were you seeking because well I didn't know at the time in particular 
particular, but I, I search for consciousness, spirituality, and, uh, you know, back then YouTube would recommend you lots of good stuff. It sort of doesn't recommend you such good stuff nowadays. So you could really go down the rabbit hole back then. And um, I saw a, a video uh, by a guy speaking about the law of one, the raw material. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I decided to listen to to the whole thing which is five books mm -hmm. and uh, it was an audio version and it, it completely blew me away um and uh, a lot of it was confirmation of things i'd already suspected to be true actually and mm, such uh, as it, such as what uh such as well a bit to do with the ascension process and uh a, us raising in vibration and the earth raising in vibration to to the fourth density as it puts it uh, that's one way of saying it um and just you know lots of stuff about how life goes on and uh, beings in other dimensions and different frequencies of existence and just the concept of channeling itself was completely new to me and it is a channeling you see and I found that fascinating indeed because mm. I feel like you know many of us even if we don't call ourselves channelers we are receiving all the time and therefore bringing wisdom as best we can into this reality and maybe that's why we incarnated here who knows Right, right. And that, that kind of brings me to um, my first question, um, you know, because you speak about channeling. And channeling is one of many six senses mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, that in Buddhism people can explore. And mm -hmm. there are many other ones as well that um, many people are not familiar with. So, mm -hmm. um, but with channeling or, you know, getting... Um, it, messages, the channeling, intuition, um, mediumship, whatever you want to title it, it's getting information from the other side, you have a process for connecting to your spirit guides and higher self. Mm -hmm. So how did that process develop? And what is the process? Well, I mean, it, it's slightly different for everyone. I mean, at, at first it was difficult because I felt like they weren't responding to me this is very early days or you know were they really there but everyone has has guides you know no one travels through time and space alone so I realized that by getting into a very relaxed state I'll be able to communicate with my guides much better because in that way our subconscious mind is more dominant and our conscious mind fizzles away and it's the conscious mind that has all the the questions like is this working am i doing this right are my guides really there so is the conscious like mind the ego that's that's constantly questioning like the childish ego that's constantly questioning is this real you, you could you could call it that or it could be part of the conscious mind the conscious mm. mind is a part of you that interprets reality it views what's going on and it does one thing at a time it, it's a uh, it sort of filters what's going on in reality and then stores all the information in the subconscious mind your bigger deeper mind so by getting very relaxed i found that i could hear my spirit guides better and that they were there and i could feel them there so it was clear sentience i was starting to feel a presence and clear audience a lot for me i could hear uh, voices <laughs> So some might say that's a, a good sign of madness, but <clears throat> sorry, I beg to differ. I what kind hear. of voices? What, what were they saying to you? Uh, giving me guidance, reassurance. And, and it was also uh, like my father who had passed on several years before. I believe he's one of my spirit guides and I could hear his voice quite clearly. And uh, I mean, you, could have been in my imagination but I don't think so because he would give me guidance and I put it into action and and it would help me so but I wouldn't always rely on clairaudience the biggest one really over time has become claircognizance because that's the sense of just knowing it's the realizations it's just knowing what they're trying to convey to you so I rely on that quite a bit nowadays uh, I can feel my guides are there with me 
frequently and often and I can just tune into them and get a little bit of guidance if I need to and send them love and they can send me love and reassurance especially if I'm feeling anxious about something I just sort of ask them to calm me down a bit that would be nice but I'm much better with anxiety nowadays I've done a lot of, of inner work indeed and feel much better nowadays but they they've supported me through that so over time it gets easier and easier and you can tune in once you know what it feels like and you know what their vibration is like you can start to tune in anytime but apart from that it's good to do a meditation and set the intention to connect really relax down first and you can ask for a sign that they're there perhaps maybe a little touch on the arm or the cobwebs on the face or a sense of love and well-being just as a, a, a little greeting that they're with you now and you can ask for that as a sign and then just begin to gently connect with them and there's no no there's no big signpost up saying you're connected now and it's quite a subtle process it can be feeling and knowing and and oftentimes when you ask for guidance or a bit of help with something it, it might not appear straight away it might appear a few days later or something and you and you think oh yeah I asked my guides to help me with that and that turned out really well so <laughs> yeah I um I love that and you know for some people they will work with the higher because I for myself I see your guides the spirit world I see it all connected your higher self it's just another aspect of yourself yep. um you know when you look further 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 it's more it's more the same the same thing yes. um but some people they they also work through a concept called synchronicity and i work through a concept called synchronicity because oftentimes i have so much going on that i'm trying to manage and balance and so i not i'm not always in the state of mind where i can um connect to that subtleness of the energy and so synchronicity is kind of a way that I work with um, with the the spirit world in terms of what's my next best step. So like if I was thinking something, something will pop up. I'm like, oh, it's perfect. So oftentimes when I'm writing my books, like for instance, like right now I'm writing my book, um, Buddhist Mandalas, um, book two. And as I'm writing something, I'm like, hmm, I need more material to kind of further substantiate this. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden, something will come up and I'm like, oh, perfect. Let me go read that. And I like, perfect. I answered that perfectly. I'm going to slide that right in and um, take it from there. So oftentimes, like images that answer the question or, um, you know, somebody will, I, I will get an email or a phone call from somebody and they'll drop some kind of lead. I'm like, that's perfect. That's exactly what I needed. And so I will just kind of follow the, um, the pathway. Do you do anything like that also, aside from listening to the intuitive knowing absolutely and i can really relate to to what you just said because that happens to me and it happens to many people and that's often something that happens during awakening as well while we're on that path of searching and seeking trying to make sense of everything because our sense of reality has been blown to bits and we're mm. trying to figure out reality again oftentimes synchronously information will fall in our lap at just the right time so it's like we wouldn't have understood that so well if we hadn't have just learned what we've just learned so this this does happen to many it's like we're on a, a synchronous path of what we're meant to experience at just the right time for our learning and growth and that's fantastic that you know you're looking out um looking for out for it as well and that, that must enhance your work like it does mine because it's almost like that's what we're meant to be knowing right now uh, for the, for all the best for the, for the, the best way forward yeah it is quite fascinating um when you are working with um your guides your angels whatever you want to call it your ascended masters your ancestry anybody on the other side it doesn't matter what you title it like we in, in buddhism we try not to get too hung up on like titles and names and categories oh, and all that because you can get hung up on it and completely miss the point absolutely and um and so when i start feeling like i'm getting like tied up in too many too many of these nuances i'm like i'm missing the point so i need to take a step back but oftentimes um like like i do hypnosis when i do hypnosis and I'm working on a book about six senses of spiritual awakening. Um, 
in the fifth dimension. And as I do that, clients will come in with different six senses and different stories that they're trying to work out in their life. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, oh, that would be perfect for chapter one. Oh, that's going to go right into chapter three. So the book is basically writing itself client by client by client. And at some point I will get enough where then I'll put it together and, you know, put it out there when it's ready. But in all of my book projects, oftentimes that's exactly how it happens. I'll finish one and I'll open up another door and synchronicity will happen in some way, shape or form. And the very next perfect uh, material will come right to me. So I don't really have a lot of time to spend, um, you know, dealing around with critics and skeptics because I'm like, you know what, you figure out your own journey, you'll get there. I need to get this material out. Just kind of like you're working with synchronicity to get this material out because mm -hmm. we have this only one lifetime and we're trying to make the best use of it. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, with that, what, because now we're going to get into the concept of awakening and ascension and people have different terms for it. Um, what is your definition of an awakening and your definition of an ascension? Hmm. Well, an awakening would be, well, for me, it was realizing the spiritual nature of self and the spiritual nature of reality, that it's not just a materialistic, physical reality and life, that it is a spiritual one. And so I suppose we can boil it right down to that, perhaps. And for an ascension, well, ascension is an ongoing process where our consciousness is changing and evolving to perhaps a higher state, the return of Christ's consciousness, which is happening in line with the earth and other beings who are also going through it too. It's a natural evolution. So awakening and ascension are kind of a different thing, but we have an awakening perhaps due to the fact it's time for our ascension <laughs> and you can have you know more than one awakening but oftentimes one will have a um a specific marked point in time a really acute awakening uh with you know that awakens us to the the fundamentals the shift from the physical to the non-physical yeah was that is that sounding about right <laughs> well no no I, I i completely get it so um and for you from your mystic experience of an awakening there's could there could be a sudden awakening or there could be a process to awakening to mm -hmm. the greater reality that um it's not just about the physical mm -hmm. there's more to the matrix than what meets the eye mm -hmm. um and then ascension from what i'm getting from your understanding is that it's evolution of consciousness is that correct yes. I, I should think so, yes, because right, we're right. raising in vibration and, and many sources have, have spoken about something going on around this mm -hmm. time. And, and I believe you know quite a bit about that in, oh, I in Buddhism. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the return of Christ consciousness, the Christians have mentioned it and also, you know, the, the Cherokee and the, and the Rainbow Prophecy and also the Mayans. And we're, many of us are very aware of that. And, and, you know, I think this is a special time where there's accelerated ascension going on and and this evolution is is bringing about more and more awakenings in people uh, right. as they're triggered into realizing perhaps the truth of our reality rather than the one that is the norm down here on earth you know right so what do so, you think so let me ask you this um what is your definition of crystalline consciousness or in western terms christ consciousness well Christ consciousness might be a you know highly evolved consciousness of very high vibration where with an ethos of love unity compassion understanding and oneness and an end to poverty and hunger and wars and and our animalistic sort of in instincts and greed and power and all of that it's and who does that who does all of that cleaning up and transcending many of us I think <laughs> we, we all have a part. We to all play. have a part. And you don't get to check out and just wake up and boom, it's already there. You're the one that is transcending and changing and evolving and transforming. 
yes absolutely and i think many of us have come here to do just that and and part of the awakening is realizing that maybe we've come here to do just that <laughs> yeah we're building the fifth dimension <laughs> I had to ask you that because I know you don't know the answer to that. I know the answer to that, but I had to ask that because sometimes there is this misconceived notion that it's somewhere to go. It's a place to go, you know, right. it's, um, it's a place that's just going to auto automatically be that it's just automatic. We're just going to go there and it's going to be there, you know, and we're going to transcend poverty and we're going to transcend um, separatism amongst each other. And it's just automatically going to be there. We just, gonna get up and somehow i don't know i've heard some wild stories get in a spaceship and then go and be there well i no. think it's more likely <laughs> a process you know um but there will be fits and starts i think i mean right now there's a, a lot of people awakening due to current circumstances where things aren't what they seem and therefore they wonder what else has been hidden from them maybe the spiritual nature of self and of reality has been hidden from them so I think it, you know, right now is is an accelerated period of an ascension, but mm. I think it's a gradual process, and it'll be probably in this space, but in another a higher dimension that we're moving into, a different frequency of matter, and right. uh, I think our, our we're tuned into this reality. It's like tuning a radio into a frequency, mm -hmm. but we're moving up in frequency and tuning into a higher frequency of matter the the energy that is all around us exactly I mean. exactly yeah the um the same exact concepts so in buddhism the same exact concepts is that um it's the higher dimensions is within our psyche within our consciousness it is self-awareness it's in our minds i mean they already know in science that we can receive up to 11 different dimensions in our minds mm -hmm. and we can probably receive up to more than that as well but it's something that happens within our consciousness and mm -hmm. through leveling up your consciousness and evolving your your energy level you physically change the physical nature of reality mm -hmm. through your I, consciousness I, I Yep, I've done videos on this, that it's not so much a place that you're going, it's a, a frequency that you're at, and that is changed by, wow, your your personality, how you feel, how much healing you've done, how you treat others, uh, your service to others type behaviors, as well as service to self, it's your, your outlook on everything, and, and it's your vibration, and, and that has changed via the mind via thought and feeling and and consciousness <laughs> right how you perceive reality right so it's not a it's not a place you could all of a sudden you check out and then you're going to check in <laughs> possibly you... in one way because it is said that if you were to pass over in this lifetime you may incarnate into in higher dimension as we call it the fifth the fifth dimension as you call it and if you've done work on the other side to, you know, perform work on the self and raise your vibration, then perhaps you'll be ready to incarnate. That will probably be a future point in time. Once this reality has moved and shifted and raised in vibration and ascended, you'd probably incarnate in the future sometime, which would be more like the frequency of 5D, as you call it. Right, right. Yeah. Um and, and what is your definition of 5D? Because I have a different definition from Buddhism. Okay, so people call it different things. So I suppose that if it has five dimensions, it would, okay, so let's say three dimensions would be length, width, and depth, right? Mm -hmm. It's all um, form. Yep. And four dimensions would be length, width, depth, and time flowing in one direction. So that's where linear, we are now. Linear yes. perspective yeah. on reality. Mm -hmm. That's it. So that might be where we are now, right? Because we have length, width, and depth. We can perceive everything in 3D, and yet we have the dimension of time going in one direction. So we're actually in the fourth dimension now, you might call it. 
Uh, and then the fifth dimension would be length, width, depth and time running not just one way, but two ways. So that that's one way to describe it. But like in the law of one, it describes it where we're moving to as the fourth density. And that's describing more the frequency of matter that we're moving to, the frequency of, of energy. I mean, don't take my definitions as the word. This is just how I perceive it and others perceive it differently. It doesn't matter um, as long as, you know, we're all doing our work, our inner work and and all of that so yeah does does is that uh, ringing any bells for you how do you perceive it how do i how does um how do we perceive fifth dimensional awareness the fifth dimensional well third in buddhism third dimensional awareness is form fourth dimensional awareness and we we say it's awareness because all the dimensions are an awareness within your consciousness within your yeah. psyche yeah um because all there is is consciousness everything else is a reflection of consciousness so um fourth dimension awareness like you say is linear you know the past affects the present the present affects the future that's linear fifth dimension awareness is understanding that it all exists at the same time it all exists now there is no time so mm -hmm. if you heal if you heal any kind of dense issues or um discord in your life or how you saw something um and you completely heal that then you change the past. You no longer hold people to the same boxes that you had held them to, or situations, the same boxes that you had held them to. And by doing that, healing the present, you can heal the past and literally change the past and also mm -hmm. the future. Because yeah. the present moment now in fifth dimension awareness changes at all. So yep. hence um, what some people call Mandela effects or reality shifts or changes in their reality where their history in their personal family or their understanding of something that they experienced firsthand has completely changed in a little way. And so now they're feeling like, oh, is, are we in the toilet zone? Uh, why is it different all of a sudden? I get clients like this from my hypnosis who come in for their own... Um, shifts in their, their changes in their history because they had done so much spiritual work and inner work that literally um, historical events in their family history has changed and yeah, that's and fifth that dimensional ring, awareness yeah that would ring true with retro causality which um states that not only can we change our future that we can change our past as well but mm -hmm. technically we shouldn't be able to remember the changes no. but those <laughs> people remember um, remember the changes absolutely but what we were saying about the the raising in, in consciousness if this currently is the third density uh, described in the frequencies of matter that this uh, reality would align with the third chakra the solar plexus chakra which in my view is a lot to do with uh, um, ego ego work and polarization the degree to which you're service to self or service to others and that rings really true for this reality it's a, a mass sort of shedding of ego if we can do that and so as we ascend it as as we already said it's very much to do with that personality work and that that inner work and that healing and the changing of ourselves so that we move up dimensions you see right right yeah you, now you had mentioned earlier about also moving with earth now um the buddhist native american mayans polynesians um we had all have all basically did the awakening ceremonies in 2012, maybe a little earlier for some traditions, but basics is change over into fifth dimensional energy on earth that's further coming in. But um, it after that, it's kind of choose your own adventure. That's how we see it. Choose your own adventure. If you think you're in the third dimension, you're in the third dimension and you're using third dimensional tools to create in the higher energies, no problem. If you think you're in the fourth dimension, then you're using the fourth dimensional tools to create whatever you want in the higher dimensions. If you are working in fifth dimensional um, awareness, then you're creating much, much, much faster, easier with the new tools that are available to us. Um, and then on and on and on. So it's create your own reality. What do you have to say about, um, you know, that concept of this is create your own reality when it comes to the awakening and ascension process um, of earth? Okay, well, we're all creating our own reality all the time, and that's the law of attraction. And you'll create a much better reality for yourself if, if 
you are creating at higher vibration. So if you're sort of stuck in 3D concepts, physical concepts and, and not perhaps doing the healing that might be beneficial to you, you're unlikely to manifest a good a reality as you would if you'd uh, uh, done those things or let go of those things. So we, we do it all the time and it's getting a handle on that. I think it'll happen more and more obviously as we do uh, ascend. It'll be more vivid, perhaps being able to create something, manifest something right in front of your eyes, like a physical object or something, rather than this sort of perhaps delay that sometimes happens when we're manifesting things. What, is your trip, what are your tricks to um, quicker manifestation? Well, uh, I think with your, your subconscious mind, we, write, we manifest very subconsciously and we can try and do it consciously as much as we can, but a lot of it is subconscious. So we might want to create something and try and make ourselves believe that we're going to create something in our reality, but subconsciously we have doubts or we have a low vibration about it. So this isn't a quick fix but doing the inner work so that we perceive our reality better as well but one way to really speed it up and i write this in my book as well is is to is to let go to let go of hanging on to this and hanging on to that to pinning our hopes on the outcome to thinking oh everything's going to be terrible if i don't fix this if i don't create this in my reality if i don't manifest a partner if i don't manifest um a job sometimes it, it's harder to manifest those things because we are pinning our our hopes and our happiness onto it in that way we're just manifesting more of of um, what we don't want because our vibration is lower so we manifest more stuff that reflects our lower vibration therefore if we can get to a point where we can just relax into creation and just let go and go with the flow then it's like as if by magic our reality starts to change and we seem to have a lot more good fortune coming our way abundance and happiness and joy i know it can be hard to just say let go and just do that but i think sometimes we get to a point where we've tried everything else and i know it worked for me when i you know i'd had a, a few bits of misfortune and i just i just thought i'm just going to let go now because instead of pinning down my manifesting and trying to keep on top of it all the time oh, i'm just going to go with the flow and at that point my life changed for the better absolutely it was at that point that um that I uh, signed um, a book deal with Hay House actually. It was a point where I'd let go of everything. Lots of great things started to happen. And now, now I just flow, flow with everything. And sometimes, yeah, you get caught up in the minutia of things again. And rely, remind yourself just to once again, flow with everything and let go. And naturally your vibration rises and, and good things start to happen. What do you think? Well, um, I've done plenty of book interviews. I think I've done over 30 book interviews on oh, wow. um, the Buddhist perspective of consciousness, consciousness awakening and ascension. Um, and so um, I have plenty. I can cover hours on this. But, um, you know, our definition of consciousness is that there's really only one person here. You know, we're all just fractal expressions of consciousness. And we're Absolutely. all playing our little, little parts and we're all going through the journey. And because we're fractal expressions of consciousness, consciousness is gifting itself, itself through firsthand experience of the different fractal expressions of itself. So like, for instance, you may, we may be looking at ourselves going, well, this, this is it. And then if we actually look at the atoms in our body, they are conscious and they're looking at themselves as this is it. But if you look further, it's part of a greater being. And if we go out into space and we look further into the earth, we are all living inside one greater being of the mm -hmm. earth that also has consciousness. And if you go further out into space, 
The earth is part of a solar system, much like the chakras, and it is one greater consciousness. And you can just keep going all the way out into infinity. And it's one big consciousness. We're all fractal Absolutely. expressions. So, Absolutely. yeah. So anybody can argue that all they want. Just keep on going further out, further out. It keeps being at one bigger and bigger and bigger focus. It's almost so. like the whole of creation is one infinite being that's infinitely intelligent and very aware. And it's divided itself up into pinpoints, individualized pinpoints of consciousness, which are part of the whole. So all one consciousness, but with individual portions of energy that have sort of gathered mass and intensity and, and become sentient and aware in themselves and so we're all going about thinking we are separate to everyone and really we're all one energy and you know quantum mechanics will say that we're all one energy and it seems pretty conscious and aware to me i mean look how clever atoms are organizing into molecules and organizing into other things it's pretty pretty genius i'd say <laughs> I would say, I mean, and if everybody looks into um, atoms, they, um, I think it's on the University of, in Germany, they are researching atoms and they have done the, they have done 3D imaging of atoms. No, none of the two, no two atoms in our bodies touch each other at right, all. Yeah. Um, it would, it would cost too much energy for I self-compose. I have no clue. But no two atoms in science touch each other. And every single atom um, is in its own perfect pyramid. Pyramid? You can this in science. You can look it up. Human cells in pyramids. You can see the pictures. Nice. I don't know what university it is in Germany. But they're, they're, they're researching nanotechnology. Every single atom is in its own pyramid so that's the pyramids that we're making we're all making our own pyramids <laughs> yeah, i'm so drawn to pyramids you know, it's very it's very uh, significant isn't it you know i've got uh, pyramid shaped organites and you know i think the pyramid shape speaks to me very much well, that's fascinating i'll look yeah. into that thank you yeah. Mon. <laughs> you are composed of a bunch of pyramids um, and awesome. it's been scientifically proven. Now, let me, now, I love your I love your your perspective on what consciousness is and how it factors into the awakening process and the ascension process as our consciousness evolves um, into becoming more connected to the whole, and at the same time having our individual experience so that the whole can experience various experiences through us. So I love that Absolutely. kind of like that two way, um, but. What are your thoughts on people who say there's one reality as compared to other people in the spiritual space that say that there are multiple realities that you can navigate through? What are your thoughts on that? Because it seems to be a hot topic. And even in Buddhism, we hotly, topic, we hotly discuss this in consciousness as well. Like, is there one? Or do we navigate? Or whatever. <laughs> so one reality or multiple timelines, you mean? Like that? Yeah, that we navigate through. I mean, how yeah. how do we see how do you see that? Okay. Well, the double slit experiment shows that well, it implies that our reality, the unified field, exists as, as waves of probability until there's a conscious observer and then it manifests into particles of energy. So Therefore, if it's waves of probability, that means there's lots of different probabilities, like a 40% chance of me walking down that road and a 60% chance of me walking down that road. And all I need to do is decide, right? So I believe that a new timeline emerges at every decision we make. And therefore, there's a possibility of always taking the other ones. Now, whether they still exist or not, Hmm, that's in question, the other possibilities. But I think seeing as they were there in the first place, they might just, because I may have taken the other choice. And so the other timeline may exist as well. And I think we're constantly jumping onto different timelines. And I think that has a lot to do with manifesting our reality. And there's probably different versions of me, different versions of my husband, depending on, on how well I'm creating my reality according to my vibration. What do you reckon? <laughs> So let me ask you this a little bit more. Um, do you, ha have you had any experiences where there has been ironic nuances in your reality? That you're like, hmm, how'd that happen? How that? Well, with synchronicities, you, do you mean a bit like synchronicities or things like moving around or how do you mean? 
Um, well, let me ask you. Okay, let me ask you this. I'm not sure if you listen, if you watch current events. Okay, you know Nelson. Too. Okay, you know Nelson Mandela. Okay, yeah. Do you remember when he died in prison? Oh yeah, I know about that. Yeah, the Mandela effect. Yeah, uh -huh. I've done a video or two on that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So have you had your own personal ones where oh, nuances yeah. in your reality completely changed from your first hand experience of them before? Well, yeah. Or did I have you never of... have any nuances? It's always been a smooth navigation of reality. Well, I've had two significant Mandela effects. What are uh, they? Okay, so um, which is that Bond movie? I can never remember the name of it. You know the Bond mm. movie with Jaws in it, the one where he has the the teeth. Have you ever seen that? Oh, one? I've seen them all. I've seen them all, but I'm not that big. I don't have. A, I'm not that big of a Bond fan to remember is them all. Is it Live and Let Die? Or I can't remember. Maybe. But anyway, the Bond movie with the with Jaws in it, the guy with okay. the metal teeth, and uh -huh. there's a scene where um, his girlfriend to be appears or something and she's there um and he smiles at her and reveals his teeth uh -huh. and then she smiles now i remember really really clearly in years gone by that she smiles and she's got a mouthful of braces because that's part of the joke that she smiles and and she's also got quite metal teeth mm. as well because she has lots of big braces on okay but now that she has no braces and she just smiles and both me and my husband we both experienced this mandela effect that now she has no braces and there'll be people watching saying oh well, she never had any braces on her teeth but there's many and uh, not just me and my husband but others too remember her clear as day having braces on her teeth in the movie so that is very you know obvious to me I'm right. Sure. I've seen the. I, I've had the movie ones. The movie ones. I'm a movie. I love some movies. I love comedy because that's the only. Way. Oh, <laughs> I have to laugh at this in every reality because they're all funny. Um, but I I I watch a lot of comedy ones, and um, my husband and I remember watching growing up the movie Sinbad, mm -hmm. or not Sinbad, but Shazam with Sinbad as the genie, and we could tell the whole storyline and everything else, and. You know, uh, I know exactly where I watch it. He knew exactly where he would watch it. And when we had kids, we thought, we thought, oh, you know what? Um, let's bring it up. And then we look for it and it doesn't exist. And we're like, how is it it doesn't exist? How is it a movie that we completely remember the storyline? We know what he wore. We know how, you know, um, who the characters are. How is it it doesn't exist? And so if it, somebody can manifest that movie, that is a hilarious movie. So you're saying it doesn't exist now? Shazam doesn't exist and never exists. What was the storyline for Shazam when you watched it? I don't know. I never. <laughs> Do you ever watch it? No, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Really? So yeah, Shazam, S H A Z A A M. Now th there was. It was funny because there was another movie called Shazam by um, the mm -hmm. NBA player. Mm -hmm. and he did it and I was like why would they do a copy my husband's the same way he's like I know it was really stupid they did a copy of Shazam why would you do a copy and it's less funny than the one with Sinbad and um but that's the one that is available we're like where's the original one and there's a lot of people who are not familiar with reality shifts or Mandela effect or parallel realities who have vivid recall of watching that movie right and it doesn't exist there's a lot of people who also have vivid recall of um publishers clearing house and the prize van with ed mcmahon and that right. doesn't exist <laughs> okay I think we've been on different timelines because i don't yeah remember right <laughs> right that doesn't exist and i i'm like oh i know because my dad my 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 immigrant dad fell for that every time whenever the publisher's clearing house we bought the readers digest books and everything else from the subscription um whenever the the every year when it came in he would play the the game from publisher's clearing house hoping to win something and he finally won something it was a 50 dollar um umbrella set um furniture umbrella set and we drove for like three hours almost to Canada to this warehouse to go get it and bring it back um but you know he 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 was devout publishers clearinghouse subscriber and we would watch the vans and just hope and pray that Edmund Mann would come and you know open the doors and there's a lot of residual I watched a um a Christmas 
um, DVD with um, DuckTales. Mm -hmm. And they had um, a saying where, um, you know, Edmund Mann will come deliver the prize checks. But this right. doesn't exist. Really? It doesn't oh exist. <laughs> so, Miss, you have just realized that you've had experiences of things that don't exist in this current reality that we are sharing right now. Oh, I so, knew that already. Okay. I mean, so, so yeah. but now you have some more evidence. Now you have some more oh, evidence. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I have the same recall as so. you. So what is your, what is your, your thought on, I mean, because I've spoken to some spiritual people and they're like, no, there's one reality. There's no other reality. I've never had any of these experiences. And so everybody else is tripping. And for everybody else who's supposedly tripping, who've had these experiences, they're going, what's, 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 what's your feedback? How do we, well, how we do we navigate? Be... Obviously there's different realities and we're going to different ones. How do we navigate it to get to the best one? <laughs> if it's, well, if yeah, this we is might experience. Be jumping timelines or, I mean, this might be a very natural phenomenon and we're just jumping. Yeah, you're in timelines. England, I'm in Seattle. <laughs> yeah, we might just be jumping uh, timelines due to, you know, our vibration and what we're manifesting and the decisions we're making as well with the, the probability thing. Or it might be someone tinkering with our reality. Uh, I've sort of suggested that before and others have as well that you know I don't always trust that CERN uh, thing that's underneath the uh, Switzerland the massive hydron collider and uh, and not long ago they said they were trying to open up a, a gateway or a portal to another dimension and I'm a bit concerned that they're sort of inadvertently muddling up timelines and that's why we're some of us remember certain things and others don't well what about people who remember certain things before CERN was created? Well, maybe they've changed the, the timelines yeah, since then and, and muddled people up so that some people remember it, some don't, you see. Maybe that's why this is a relatively modern ph uh, phenomenon that's come about in the modern day since CERN's been tinkering around. I'm not saying it is that. It could just be a natural phenomenon where we are simply picking different timelines and uh, remembering some parts not others or it might be as you said the retro causality where we're, we are actually changing our past through manifesting backwards and remembering it or but I d I'm pretty sure I didn't manifest anything to do with the changes in the Bond movie so <laughs> You're like, I, I know really Bond much about that <laughs> not even much of a fan but anyway so who knows yeah yeah <laughs> so go yeah I, this is always the one that i that's the one question that um i ask every spiritual person <laughs> practically and they always go mm -hmm. i don't know <laughs> learning <laughs> i um it's i can give you the i can give you the one of the buddhist understanding yeah go for it or bit it's consciousness we're changing our consciousness so we're shifting to a different reality that matches our consciousness yeah. um in some people call it quantum jumping Mm -hmm. yep yeah that's it so yeah there's multiple realities and you're just shifting to the one that matches your frequency yeah so that's it that's we're being fifth dimensional but we just don't know that we're being fifth dimensional yes and that's probably why it's happening more <laughs> and more <laughs> Sorry, like, I, I, over, <laughs> I get a bit overexcited um that's probably why it's happening more and more because we're blinking while ascending aren't we so we have these abilities what did we say about time going in not just one direction anymore but two therefore we're having these innate abilities emerge but at first perhaps they're uncontrolled and we haven't honed them we haven't practiced them and therefore it's happening in sort of random manner it may be our yes. new abilities emerging because we're moving into as you say the fifth dimension where time's going to run in two ways which means we can move around in time at will there you go <laughs> yeah yeah um people are mm. it's almost kind of like um people are having growth spurts and when they have a growth spurt also they can just jump really high and they're like how do i do that that's new can i do it again yeah, i don't know do. and then they're just like they, they have these abilities um as they evolve and they are learning about themselves so they you know they're learning about how to hone it in how to amplify it how to work with it you know it, it, so it's just kind of like a teenager who's just coming you know they're coming into their new bodies 
Mm-hmm. And at first it's like, Ooh, that was really cool. I could, I could jump really high. And then it's like, mm-hmm. Oh, how do I, how do I work with this? How do well, I, you know, cause I, I notice it's happening more and more. So I, I, I think, think it's kind of like that. Yeah. I think the best way to work with it is to visualize what you want in your life and what you want to happen. So just create it ahead of time, go with the flow, let go of all attachments and, and the wanting and the trying extra hard. And, visualize like this next year that's coming 2021 i think we all need to visualize a good year right and i think that will help keep each of us in as individuals on the absolute best timeline we need to see this year as a full of opportunities there's lots of awakenings happening so there must be opportunities coming we need to visualize this year ahead wouldn't you agree oh yes well 2020 for me has been wonderful (laughs) (laughs) yeah 2020 has been wonderful i mean yes i you know but got affected with the pandemic and there's been changes in um you know obviously uh mask wearing and you know the six feet distance and all the mitigations and stuff and it and it changes and evolves and you know we respect it and so we are um you know we're playing the game and it's going to come to a close very, very soon. Um, and everybody will, you know, resume. But it, 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 2020 is a year of, you know, everybody got, whether they see it or not, I see it as an opportunity to kind of check out a little bit and self-reflect and kind of focus on what you want. And most people have been stuck on the rat race so much in their lives, going from mm. A to B to C, et cetera, et cetera, that they just never really had time to sit and focus on things mm. and really assess and fine tune how they want the rest of this sojourn um, that we are experiencing to play out. And so it was a really good opportunity for the earth to heal Mm -hmm. um and to clean up the environment um and it's an opportunity for people if they choose to or not to take the time to self-reflect and kind of clean up their inner inner consciousness so um it is for 20 for a lot of people um especially that i talked to and interviewed in the spiritual space they've they've really taken the opportunity and really found uh, 2020 to be a wonderful year for them um but for others it's a little bit of a challenge because they've never done self-reflection so um and so this is the first time that they've actually like stopped to actually to actually look and assess some of the things that they've been some of the baggage they've been carrying forward up to this year and so um and really assess like their relationships and oh i really need to work on um how i see this or that or whatever Mm -hmm. so um but that's my perspective on 2020, 2020 hindsight. It's just an opportunity to you know, kind of look within and clean up things and then focus on how you want to manifest moving forward. So um, with that, I mean, like, what is your take on how people can manifest moving into 2021 and, and beyond in these higher energies? Well, as I say, a picture of a better way forward, a good way forward where humanity can do that ascension and where in many ways we're held back and often by the powers that be we're held back and that we can overcome and hopefully transform the system we're living under whereas you know we've seen a lot of changes recently that you know hopefully there i say a lot of our, our rights have been taken away hopefully some those will get reversed and we can go back to <clears throat> having our rights once more but then beyond that transform transforming society to one which is fair for all and uh, based on love compassion and unity and if we can imagine that it's playful imagination with excitement playfully imagine how life will be and uh, paint that picture because thought creates reality mm-hmm. yep mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> i will say i will say this um because y- your book is coming out in March and um, some people, some critics will say when it comes to the space that this, the book should be free. Um, you should never really charge. If you're spiritual, you should never really charge anything. Um, all you just trying to, you know, get money. Um, and I will say for critics that challenge people who are in the space, writing books, doing lectures, providing um, courses like you do on your website, that um, 
churches all over the world have a 401c nonprofit for a reason, and people pay tidings so that they can continue the services to help the community. And, um, you know, all this information is free. You can learn all this stuff free, but if you want to learn it from somebody who has focused on creating material for you to learn, like if you want to go to a, a school, you're going to pay or um, find some kind of compensation for their time to teach the material. So, um, you know, with that, what do you say to critics who are like, Nikki, your stuff should be free? Yeah, sometimes occasionally I, that does happen. There might be a comment on, on a video saying, um, like if I mention my courses or, or whatnot, uh, that I should be, shouldn't be charging for anything. But see, trouble is, if I don't, then I'd have to go out and get a regular job and then I wouldn't have any time to do this stuff and then you wouldn't see any of my stuff. So I do, you know, as we do, we give a lot away for free and, that, you know, that can be said that's for marketing. But actually, I just love making videos to help people realize the spiritual nature of self and of reality. But I need to keep the lights on. I need to feed the kids. And I'm not looking to be a billionaire by any means. And I'm, you know, I've got a really old pair of, of uh, sneakers, trainers. Um, and my husband says, buy your, your, your sneakers are, is that what you call them? Running shoes. Okay, running shoes. I didn't know what yeah, the American sneakers are fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay, because we call them trainers. Um, your, your running shoes are eight years old. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, oh, but I know they look a bit shoddy, but they've still got a few years left in them. So trust me, I'm not aiming to be a billionaire. Um, and I think this is with any, anyone in this field. Um, some are literally in it for the money. Obviously, there's going to be some. Others are not. They're in it for the love of it, the joy of it, and wanting to help people. But, you know, I wouldn't des deny any viewer of mine the right to keep their electricity going or to pay their water bill. So it's probably not that great to deny <laughs> that for me when I'm just trying to <clears throat> make my way. Otherwise, I'll have to jack it in and go do something else. Um, and also, in the, at the end of the day, money money is energy. Well, it's a concept. And many view it horribly and because it's been used in horrible ways i mean you've got billionaires there that are hoarding billions um and which could end world poverty but we don't go into that now but for the everyday person it's a you could say it's a means of enslavement uh, but currently in this system we need it to get by and uh, and there you go <laughs> that's all i have to say about that <laughs> Well said. Well said. I would definitely, I would definitely say, like, um, like some people will will challenge me and say, "Well, you should do your hypnosis for free." And I say, "I do do my hypnosis pro bono, on on occasion, but um, for the most part, it is a service, and it takes four hours of my time, and my those four hours are not free." Absolutely. I did not work for free because I have to, like you say, I have two children and I have to take care of yeah. them the best that I can. And that they're taking my time away from my children to help them out. And I love helping people out and let, and asking those questions and facilitating those sessions. And yeah. I love writing the metaphysical books uh, because it's the stuff that I love, just like you love metaphysics as well. And consciousness, I love talking about my experience of it and from my tradition, et cetera. But um, for all the effort that I put into it, um, there needs to be an a, a energy exchange. And at this yeah, time, it is, yeah, at this time, it is through money. Now, however, um, many of the materials that I write about are free on the YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> but you got to yeah. do the work. You got to do the work. So I always find that critics oftentimes are so easily criticize things, but they don't even read or read or watch any of the stuff that they're criticizing to the fullest mm. extent. Yeah, even a church needs money to run and because uh, yeah. we're all under this system. By the way, did, I do hypnosis as well because uh, I'm a trained past life therapist. So oh, I'm wonderful. Doing, yeah, I, I'm not doing sessions at the moment, but I've done sessions as well. So we have another thing in common there because um, I was doing, um, I created a higher self hypnosis, soul retrieval. I did the past life regression, cord cutting and all of that. Um, it's fantastic. I love it. It was, It's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> It's amazing. It's amazing work. And it's interesting the information that comes through yeah. as well. Um, what's the modality of hypnosis that you use? Because I use QHHT from the Dolores Cannon method. 
Oh, well, I trained with the Past Life Therapists Association. So, oh, okay. uh, yeah, in the UK, it's a UK based organization. So uh, I think it's similar because uh, some of my clients said that they um, had hypnosis with a, a, a practitioner, Dolores Cannon practitioner, and they said it was quite similar in, in mm, many ways yeah, many of them I was are curious yeah mm. I was curious uh, check I was doing it right you know but um mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> many so of them are the same many many of them are like uh, many of them kind of follow the, um, similar you know there's the script to get induction and then yeah. you know et cetera, et cetera. so um but you know people I typically find will be because I I've I've had I've had some people who um have gone through the, I think there's three levels of courses for the Dolores Cannon method. And I um, am, you have to train and recertify for level three. So I'm on level three. But anyways, um, many people who come into the modality also have trained in other modalities of hypnosis as well. And mm. they say about the same thing. This is, this is a slightly different way to get into the information, but mm. um, it's much the same. They're very similar yeah. to each other. So people will oh, awesome. kind of gravitate to the modality that fits them the most. It's yeah. kind of like exercise. Some people exercise differently. Yeah, yeah. I think it gives you lots of skills training in hypnosis and it's great for healing. And my clients would, would always be really pleased and, and it's helped me to create the guided meditations that I create as well because all the skills I learned in that and all the experience I had has enabled me to create really good guided hypnoses so people can sort of use them on mass and uh, and do past life regressions um, themselves without without booking a session so they can do it for free. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. You so, have MP threes on your website of the different meditations yeah, yeah. that you offer. Which of the the MP three meditations are the most popular ones for people to kind of go to? Well, it's it's quite promising actually because um, send healing energy to someone is is the top one at the moment, and that's mm. nice because it shows that people are caring for others and they're sending other people healing energy. I mean, how mm -hmm. beautiful is that? That's yeah, this healing. It's just amazing. Yeah. So people are wanting to ca take care of other people. That is just beautiful. Um, and then chakra cleansing, and then see your future meditation. Chakra cleansing is a good one too because a lot of people um hold on to dense um issues in the chakras from mm. either the childhood or sometimes even from what i found in hypnosis from other lives that mm -hmm. for whatever reason they have a mm -hmm. fear or paranoia about something and it's not they have no recollection of how they came about it in this life mm -hmm. and oftentimes it's found that it, it it relates to an incident in another life in a past life and so um but it's being held in their energy field so it's chakra clearing does it address mm -hmm. that as well well it that meditation is is generally just um for clearing blockages in the chakras and addresses like each chakra in turn what it represents mm -hmm. and to feel certain uh, just to examine certain parts of self go inwardly and do that and then we do the in energy cleansing chakra by chakra so um yeah i think people quite like that one that was <laughs> yeah kind of like um what is it oh some people do the colon cleansing chakra cleansing <laughs> get a tune up get a tune up it's good to get a tune up. I love my husband loves he loves the chakra cleansing uh, meditations at night. Sometimes I would just play and just kind of tune out <laughs> after the kids yeah. have gone. We're like, oh, we, oh, we need a we need to reset. It's it's a, it's nice to get a tune up. I call it uh, yeah, a chakra we, tune up. We need to really relax. Sometimes it's all very well saying relax and going through the motions but it's in the allowing we have to allow ourselves to mm -hmm. really seek that deep relaxation by just letting go of everything and allowing ourselves to relax it's so important because stress you know we accumulate it in our body and then you know <laughs> don't want well, that yeah yeah I, I will say too there's a lot of people in the spiritual community who one of the six senses is being empathic Mm -hmm. And they would take on, um, on especially as they um, are not aware of the six senses or haven't fully amplified, honed, and kind of, you know, uh, honed it in. Mm -hmm. um, so they would just naturally just go through and just empathize and take people's baggage unknowingly. Yeah, and then they just feel drained. And they're like, I don't know why I'm so drained. Yeah. I don't have any issues going on in my life. But um, sometimes 
that happens for some people. Um, and so with the chakra cleansing type of meditation, um, help kind of clean that like unknowing yeah, energy absolutely. that take on from other people. Absolutely. I've also got um, an empath uh, cl energy cleansing guided meditation just for empaths because I'm more than a little bit aware of, of that issue with um, empaths uh, taking on excess energies from others. I've also got a protection guided meditation to help, you know, protection from such yeah. energies. Yeah. We want to empathize with and help others, but if it's uh, overloading us, then we need to reset and discharge yeah. these energies. And from personal experience, that's something I, ne I need to do quite regularly. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do, I, I do a little meditation when I, um, like if I walk the nature or something because nature is really really healing because the energy will kind of you know be released to nature and nature will transmute it Absolutely. and so sometimes just as a tip everybody it's really good like if you go through nikki's website and you and you download the mp3 that you're guided to oh. um whichever one that you're guided to um and this i think there's some courses as well on um helping facilitate your six senses um your psychic intuitive whatever you want to call it abilities yeah. so as you yeah as you get further into um, your spiritual journey and your inner work, even if you don't do spiritual, you don't call it your spiritual journey, as you get further into your inner work, um, you're going to naturally amplify um, your existing six senses if you have some, or if you haven't become aware of it, they will activate. And as you get further into this, they will amplify. So it could scare the living shits out of you. <laughs> I'm yeah. not, I'm not, I'm not cookie cutting, I'm not cookie cuttering it at all. Cause I no, see some I of these clients that come in with the six senses. like, what the heck is this Vaughn? Yeah. I'm like, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's, let's see what the deal is. Um, <laughs> and then their kids. An awakening. Yeah. yeah. And if, and typically if you, if you're in this space, you'll have children who have yeah. the same similar gifts or even new ones that will scare the living yeah. daylights out of you as well. <laughs> So we're entering new space in these higher energies. So for people like that, um, do, what kind of courses do you offer for them to work with the sixth sense as hone it in and maybe like learn to live with it? Just kind of like, you know, when people, like I said earlier, when people get into adolescence, all of a sudden they, you know, spring in new abilities like the jump higher or the stronger or whatever. And then they're kind of a little clumsy with their new ability, the new body. So unless they learn to deal with it and live with it and, you yeah. know, be responsible and respectful with it um, and not, you know, use their strength or um, their abilities to manipulate things. So kind of be mm -hmm. res responsible for your extra gifts. So mm -hmm. what kind of courses do you offer these people off your website? Well, I've got a Manifesting Miracles online course, which is absolutely free. Um, that's a, a mini course. But, For uh, those yeah, critics who are like, you nothing free. You guys always want money, money, money. <laughs> yeah, that one's absolutely free. I put loads of work into it. And it's, it's hosted, you know, in a really good platform there attached to my website. And it's, it's all professionally done. It's all good stuff. Um, and I have an intuitive and psychic development course, um, and an inner work for ascension course. But with the intuitive and psychic development course, which is the most uh, popular one well I've only got two paid ones but um, it's the most popular one it, it helps people to develop their own natural abilities because we all do have them and and sometimes people say that we don't it's only a, a certain people that have mediumship abilities or psychic abilities but we all have it to some degree it's just not practiced or used or developed you know so mm -hmm. it's starting with the intuition but then moving on to psychic senses and and developing your clairs your four clairs which are really important that's how you're perceiving the information you need to develop them and and then developing you know individual um abilities like precognition and uh, um, a bit of remote viewing I believe is in there and spirit communication and and commu uh, communicating with your spirit guides and stuff and uh, and also alleviating things that are blockers to psychic work you know needing to relax down and and ways to do that effectively and uh, blockers such as you know doubt subconscious blockers and being in hypnotherapy you'd know about subconscious blockers when someone believes they can't do it and then the subconscious makes sure they can't do it <laughs> and questioning you know am I doing it right is it happening now and all of that 
this these are all blockers so it's removing lots of other blockers as well that I can't remember right now but they're all in the course and, and what it feels like to have um, psychic senses and what it feels like to use your clairs how do you know you're doing it you know so it's it's full of good stuff um that course anyway yeah, really. I mean, it's very fascinating. And I did, I went through the site and I was like, oh, this is really good stuff. It's really, you know, so like I said, Thank um, you. yeah, you're welcome. Like I said, the mist, you know, the path in which Nikki has gone through is the mystic journey. And there are mystics literally in every religion in the world, um, in shamanism, you know, mystics and so i love a good mystic journey because not everybody's previewed to a uh, monastic institution that already right. has it already documented and right. mapped map so mapped out and, and so you know like my childhood mm. of buddhism i was previewed to it i got born into it and it's just like oh it's just it's just it's be like being born in a library here you go enjoy that's amazing you, you must be highly knowledgeable and and you know I, I slightly you know would have wished for something like that and um but you know the knowledge you would have gained i i imagine you know you being very wise at this point yeah. <laughs> i just crack i guess crack in reality it's it's, it's hilarious but i thought it's the most funny is people are the most entertaining <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. People are the most into entertaining, and I find that the most entertaining. I'm like, oh, that's a different, that's a different way to see it. Oh, that's a that's a different way to see absolutely. it. Absolutely, perception is um, very interesting. Everyone yeah. sees the world a different way, and they're all right. Created. They're all right according to their experience so far. Yes. But just kind of like, just kind of like we said earlier, as you expand your consciousness and you see more of things, you are right about this at this point. But when you see more of things, you expand. You're like, oh, I need to. Yeah. I'm being, I need to expand even more. And so you learn more and you grow more and absolutely, and so it's, it's, all, it's all a journey and I completely get it. Um, but do you have any last message for people um, in changing times? Because this whole process is not going to happen in a decade too. It's going to, it's a series and it could be many lifetimes. So. Well, I'd say to remember that you are infinite soul consciousness and that this is one experience of many, an important experience. You probably come here for very good reason. But the, the message I always want to get through to people, the core message is you're more than the human being you see in the mirror. You may have had personal experiences to validate that for you or not. And many haven't. So they they don't realize this but your infinite soul consciousness you are immortal you go on after this life but to cherish this life because i think it's quite a privilege to be here and it might not seem like it <laughs> but i think it's because this existence is rich in catalyst for your ascension and growth and other existences many of them are probably all highly ascended and all all love love and light and, and probably not so much exciting stuff goes on but you know this is a journey of learning experience and by seeing it that way perhaps you can transcend a bit more of any stuff unpleasant stuff that goes on for you and to i, I ask people to live their truth and uh, and speak your truth authentically and uh, then you're being true to yourself yeah i think i uh, is that okay <laughs> that's wonderful and that's beautiful thank you nikki that's a wonderful message for people oh. um you know nikki it's been fun chatting with another yeah. high vibe soul about another perspective everybody another perspective on these topics that are foundational principles in buddhism and of course for me and i know we presented some profound insights for people to consider um, so for more information about nikki sutton's offerings go ahead and visit her website which is nikki n-i-c-k-y sutton s-u-t-t-o-n dot com she has a fabulous youtube channel um, that she's had running since 2014 and much of the information is there for free but um but, but if you want more of the material that she's putting together her newest book um consciousness rising comes out in march and um when it is out it'll be on her website and i'll go in and update the description to have the link Aww. to amazon as well so you can just Thank click you. and then go straight to mm -hmm. all her and i think this is your first book nikki right yeah yeah it's a hay house book um right and uh, we're still just doing the very last bits of editing well the, the 
the text is edited it's more formatting now so right. and then I have to record the audio book uh, at some point soon as well it's quite exciting uh, it's been an amazing ride I'm really looking forward to it coming out and I think it will really help people going through awakening people interested in awakening if uh, if you're having a bit of a rough ride with it or just as a as a passing interest it it, it explains the stages of awakening and and much more you know what we're awakening from what we're awakening to and my own personal experiences and example experiences of others and then through the awakening process and then um and the beyond bit is where I help people with practices and meditations and concepts to help you on your journey. So that's where I was going with that book. It's a great package. Right, <laughs> right. I hard on it. You did, a wonder, you did a wonderful job. I can definitely feel it. And I love it. I love it. It's another um, great thing to add to the mysticism of spirituality. And, you know, I, this is going to be the first of many, many more books. As you go through your journey, you'll be documenting it. And other people, oh. like I said, everybody is in different phases of their awakening yeah, and ascension process it. and their spiritual conscious expansion. Um, yeah. So they're in different phases and there's many teachers at different phases. And so yeah. the one that's right for you will be presented to you and you will resonate with that material because that's exactly the spot where you need that material and as you move into your process in whatever level you're working on the next material will come into your presence and you will work on that material and that will help you in how you create your dharma as well yeah, so well, i think you. yes and i so i i really really excited to present your material but oh, so um kind oh you're welcome so with that thank you kindly to the listeners for listening to another enlightening conversation until yes. next time safe journeys down the rabbit hole and of course blessings blessings <laughs> We hope you enjoyed this episode of Merkaba Chakras, where we talk Buddhism in the fifth dimension. For more information about today's guest, please go to the show description. For more information about Vaughn's metaphysical work, please go to MerkabaChakras.com. The views expressed today are for entertainment purposes and do not necessarily reflect the views of the host or replace any medical or legal advice. Don't forget to subscribe for more interviews about the fifth dimension. Until we meet again, blessings.